In the last Ram Charger video, I finally got an exhaust put on, which will allow me to finish everything needed to get it roadworthy. Sounds clean, I like it. Yeah. You've seen it run and drive, but she's got some issues staying running. Like this, and this, and this. She has a vibration in the drivetrain that wasn't there before. I also need to properly time the engine, figure out why this valve is leaking, bleed the brakes, and adjust the parking brakes. Now dad already started diagnosing the drivetrain vibration and he actually found that the U-joints that we decided to keep in an earlier video were not good. And I've decided to go ahead and hold on and install the same ones. I'm gonna boost them up really good. And uh, if they fail, then I'll go ahead and, and get some new ones. But... As you can see, we've got the Ram Charger up on jack stands to finish installing new U-joints and to bleed the brakes and adjust the parking brakes. But before I get too dirty, the interior is a hoarder's dream, and this is where I'm gonna start today. Now, I've neglected it knowing that it's gonna need a new carpet, the seats need to be completely reupholstered, and it needs a new headliner. I've kept the old headliner so we can make the shape to put it back up there because this metal tin roof it's gonna get really hot, especially in the summer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take all these nuts and bolts that I've taken out of the dash, really, to put them in some sandwich baggies and label them. You can also notice that the entire cluster is out of the Ram Charger. That's because we're gonna update the lights in the back so they're bright and you can actually see them at night. All right, so now that I've got my sandwich bags here with all my bolts that go to the dash, I've got a lot of interior parts here, right? Some of them I need to replace like this glove box door, uh, maybe some other little pieces in the dash. But before I start that, I need to take full inventory and find out what I do have inside the Ram Charger. But I need to put them somewhere a little safe. So what I think I'm gonna do is start putting these in the back of the Ram Charger, and not so much in this driving area because it just kind of makes it a pain to get in it move it, test it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the back and start moving these pieces to the back. Also, it looks like I was already putting stuff back here, but I wasn't being organized at all, so I don't know what I was thinking. Um, so yeah, let me grab the trash can and start cleaning this out. But yeah, fun tip, you put some vice grips on the bottom of these shocks right here, and it'll keep your hood, your door, whatever it is from actually falling down. You just need one too. So got one right up there, but yeah, let me clean some of this stuff out and then grab the vacuum. All right, a small deviation in my plans um, today. This is actually the headliner that I was talking about. And as you can see, it's it's really brittle and I really need the shape of this so I don't lose it. And it's actually two pieces. So the front piece is actually behind my fridge up there in the garage. So it's nice and safe, but this piece is falling apart rapidly. Um, and I don't want to lose that shape. So what I'm going to do is take some cardboard, throw it on the floor, lay this on top and get the shape and cut it out before it's entirely too late. And this falls apart any further than it is. Um, as you Ram Charger owners might know, it's really hard to find any parts for this car, for these trucks. And now that I have this template, I don't wanna lose it. So that's what I'm gonna do right now because I don't wanna lose this and I wanna use this whole area to put all the radio, the CB, put everything in the back here nice and organized. So let's go ahead and pull this out and make sure that it's you know, not messed up. All right, so I made a template for the headliner. Uh, I didn't record all of it because honestly, I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew I needed to make a template. I used some of that action gypsum uh, construction paper. I actually looking at my duct tape job just now. I need to go ahead and put some sideways duct tape here to hold this just a little bit better. But I've got to flip this way so it'll actually flatten out because it came out from a really big roll. Well, let's check it out. All right, so I moved over my moving blanket with my tools. I don't want to lose the nuts and bolts over there, but check it out. It is pretty much just a template for the headliner. You can actually kind of see the other one right there behind the fridge. So yep, got this headliner template done up. I'm gonna put some duct tape this way to hold the duct tape going up and down um, nice and center, but I'm gonna go ahead and put that away and grab the vacuum. All 
All right, so now that I've got the inside all cleaned out, I can go ahead and take oh, my dad's home. I can go ahead and take all the parts from inside the Ram Charger and actually start organizing them up back here. And then I got to actually clean out and vacuum the inside of the Ram Charger as well. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because when you have a clean truck, a clean project vehicle, it's much easier to see where everything's at, organize your projects, and just have a streamlined process. Right now, it's kind of our problem is we've got stuff absolutely everywhere. So we'll go ahead and get that stuff on the inside and start organizing it back here. Um, that's typically a sign of a freaking rodent, a squirrel, something living in your car right there. Just my luck. So I might have gotten a little carried away with cleaning and organizing, but I'm very glad I did because there's one piece that I actually thought that I lost and I swear I was losing my mind because it was incredibly difficult to come by. But let me show you what I did. All right, in the back of the Ram Charger, I've got a lot of my interior pieces laid out in a way where I understand where everything is. Now, I spoke about having some more fragile pieces. I was really talking about the dash you see it's the wood grain one and not the silver one and i'm already missing this piece over here so i want to be very careful with this until i find another one now something that broke on my ram charger is actually the driver's side window visor as you can see i still have the stickers for the roof removal four-wheel drive procedures so this is really important to me but this part appears what broke but lucky enough dad went to a random junkyard and he found these visors and the rods were still um, intact. So I took the driver's side out. You can see it's missing there. And I had no idea where I put it. So I was like freaking out, but I found it. Now taking this inventory and organizing everything was extremely important because I've already messed up. So you can see these are the header collectors. I couldn't find them because they were somewhere lost in this truck and we ended up buying new ones obviously as you know the exhaust is already on the truck so that's what i'm trying to avoid is buying and replacing a lot of these parts that i may already have because they are expensive now i did end up cleaning the entire dash all the way in there i wiped down everything as best as i could it was super filthy if you look at the interior the carpet is clean i mean it looks like absolute shit but I promise you guys, I vacuumed it in the front. I even vacuumed the seats, even though as you can see, they're falling apart. Here is that magical rod that I was missing. I'm gonna finish cleaning this up today and installing it. That way that visor is nice and safe. I cleaned out the entire center console. This is definitely gonna come out and get resprayed without a doubt. Again, underneath in the back seat, now, it's not like a full detail job, but compared to what it was, this is way better to work in. You may have noticed this door panel is in a trillion pieces. That's because the window motors don't work on either side, but I've got all the door switches, all the pieces, some old school paperwork in here in the front. So I separated that from a lot of the other bigger pieces so I wouldn't lose them. The other window switch on the driver's side is off as well. Uh, but all I'm gonna do right now before I start adjusting these brakes is install this piece. All right, so these are the visors arms right here. So I went ahead and replaced both of them while I was right here. So these are still good. So I'm actually gonna save these. Well, this one's not good. This one's actually shot. But this one I'm gonna save just in case, because again, really hard to come by parts. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the parking uh, parking brake, the rear dragging on the brake shoes in the back. All right, if you didn't know to adjust your rear brake shoes, you want them to drag just a little bit. Right now, it's just a little too loose, but all you have to do is remove these right here and you can adjust the shoe. Let me go ahead and use my second hand.
There you go, now I can hear a dragon. It's probably really hard to pick up on the audio, but that's basically what you want. Now I just need to go ahead and check the other side. Yeah, I like that. Bam! Alright, so aside from cleaning up the interior, changing out those visors, earlier in the video I did mention that we were getting the brighter bulbs for the gauge cluster. And I'm not sure if I mentioned, but I got some fluorescent paint from Hobby Lobby. I don't have the steadiest hands, so I want to give a shout out to my mom for painting these gauges because it takes a steady hand. She loves doing arts and crafts, um, but check these out. All right, so I got them just like that in between the grill, or excuse me, the front cowl. But this orange, she actually hand painted with a brush to the exact line, but it's fluorescent and it should actually be a lot brighter than they were before. So I'm super excited about that. The new bulbs also came in. So it's just all about slamming back together this gauge cluster. Got the new needle on, oops, dropped the screwdriver. Got the new needle on, on the uh, speedometer there. So yeah, it's just about finishing, cleaning this up just a little bit and then putting it all back together. All right, guys, I'll give you a little confession. This entire time I've had family and friends over. They're doing a cookout. They're cooking up some Korean food. We got some Puerto Rican food my mom's throwing down. And I've been out here working on the Ram charger. I'm a little bummed I didn't get as far as I wanted to today, especially with the drive shaft. When my dad brought me the U-joints, he's like, you know you need a tool to put these in. And I'm like, you're right. <laughs> I have the air impact. I just don't have the actual tool to put them in. The other part of that was we got the brakes done. I didn't get to time the engine, and that's kind of like a big deal. As you guys saw, the Ram Charger likes to stall out a lot until it warms up. I had the same issue with the CJ7, but we got all that sorted out with some timing and fine carb tuning. Now that valve likes to leak once it's running and idling, so that's something else that I need to look at once it's running and idling. But in order to do that, you need to get the drive shaft on, you need to time this engine, pull this thing out, let it idle so I can really diagnose those problems. I don't really need the gauges and the cluster in order to do all that work, so I'm not really too pressed about that. But the mechanical side of it is what I'm really trying to focus on. All right, for my Ram Charger Connoisseurs, if you notice in the background, this is in fact a bird bath hood. And it's in really great shape and condition. I also found these Power Wagon emblems. These are also in really good shape. I mean, just solid stuff right here. I found these on eBay. So I found these on eBay before I even found the bird bath hood. Found the bird bath hood down in San Antonio and since then it's been on the truck and off the truck and on the truck and off the truck because I just can't make a solid decision on which look I like better. So I'll enter some pictures and I'll let you guys be the voice of reason. Tell me which one do you think looks better. Me personally at this moment it's going to have to be the hood that's currently on it. If you look, this shape right here, I mean, minus the hole right there, right? But if you look at the shape right here when it comes up just like that, and then by the Dodge emblem, it comes up one more time, I think it looks really good. I think the original hood that it came with looks the best, but I've always been a fan of the bird bath hood and it's super rare, so I'm kind of stuck. What do I do? The last thing that we've been going back and forth on is paint versus patina. This paint job here took, with this truck, what, 30, 40 years to, to get? And it's, it's one of a kind. I mean, it's pretty much original and it looks really mean. And everybody that sees the truck says like, that looks badass, just like that, leave it that way. Clear coat it, poppies patina it, do anything to keep it patina. Part of me wants a super nice power wagon look, just like the 2018 power wagon. The other part of me looks at this and says like, this looks badass and this took so long for it to, come out this way that you can't really recreate it. So you guys tell me, keep it patina? Or do I go ahead and finish what it is that I was gonna do? Which is why I removed all the factory trim off of it, by the way, like the tail light bezels. I actually have those as well. They're actually right over here on the shelf. But part of removing all that was because I had a feeling I was gonna paint it. So what should I do? Keep it patina or paint it? Now that's gonna wrap up today's progress on the Ram Charger. Nothing crazy happened. Again, I'm a little bummed myself, but I am documenting this whole process. I'm um, taking as much video as I can, but it is now 5.50 
in the evening. I've been here since noon. So about six hours worth of work to just clean everything up and organize everything, which again, I'm glad I did. But guys, if you like these videos, if you wanna see more Ram Charger content, then tap in, hit that like button, leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe, because I'm just gonna keep going. And we're gonna keep going until we take this truck and the CJ7 and maybe even the Power Wagon, the trio, all three of them, to Hidden Falls Adventure Park and we do some off-roading here in Texas. Until next time, guys, peace out. <laughs> this receipt is from 1994. He got a battery. Battery adjustment is what it says.